Disturbing accusations against a Metro Detroit doctor. We will tell you the three different places prosecutors say the doctor assaulted both adults and children. Taking a live look at Chicago, where the Democratic National Convention gets underway later tonight. Who's expected to headline that big event? Hey there, Pam. Hey, Karen, we are live and we are here at Durfee Innovation Society for our Go For It event. We are, of course, collecting shoes. That's the number on the board, more than 2,000. It is going to go up. We're talking impacts when we come back in just a couple minutes. And after a chilly start this morning, most everybody into the 40s and 50s waking up. It's going to be another chilly night overnight tonight, but we do have a warming trend on the way looking ahead into the weekend. I'll break down what you can expect in your complete forewarned forecast coming up. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. A Metro Detroit doctor is charged with recording both adults and children through hidden cameras. In a press conference today, prosecutors say these crimes happened in his home at two hospitals and at a Goldfish Swim School in Rochester. We're working on getting details on his connection to that school. We're told both the hospitals and the swim school are cooperating with the investigation. Omer Ojeas is facing 10 charges, including child sexually abusive activity and capturing dis and distributing an image of an unclothed person. This individual potentially is one of the worst I've ever seen because there's no particular category. It's not just children. It's not just women. It's not just men. It goes from a two-year-old to a grown woman. And so the victimization is so broad and the perversion so great that we're just beginning to wrap our arms around it. Jay has reportedly worked as a contract physician who primarily worked at Ascension, Genesis, and Henry Ford Macomb Hospital, but he could have handled patients elsewhere. An email has been established for people who believe they could be victims. A link to that is on clickondetroit.com, and you can also follow that story as we update it for you tonight at 5. As the EPA gets to work cleaning up the mess left behind from the Clinton Township explosion, charges move forward for the man prosecutors say is responsible. 31-year-old Noor Kestu is facing a manslaughter charge for the explosions in March that led to the death of a 19-year-old. Investigators say Kesto was arrested while trying to leave the country. He is due back in court in October. Well, a former Detroit Lion is accused of urinating on an elderly woman on a flight to Dublin. Goster Cherilis was a first-round pick for the Lions. It was back in 2008. He was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct on the flight, which then had to be diverted back to Boston. Cherilis apologized and says he took a sleep medication that resulted in behavior out of his character. He is pleading not guilty. Ahead at five, we'll be hearing from the victim detailing the alleged encounter with the football player. Former President Donald Trump is in Howell this afternoon. He stopped by the Livingston County Sheriff's Office to talk about crime and safety. Trump yes, spoke to the crowd of officers, accusing Vice President and Kamala Harris of wanting to defund the police. Trump says he wants to address violent crime and deportation in the U.S. This is Trump's sixth time visiting Michigan just this year. Meantime. Day two of the Democratic National Convention in Chicago with some more big names taking the stage tonight. We are going to hear from former President Barack Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama. The Obamas are expected to underscore how high they think the stakes are headed into Election Day. Devin joins us now, and it's really interesting with some uh, question about in terms of if Republicans would actually take the stage on this one, because you never see that. It's pretty fascinating, Karen. A number of Republicans are going to be speaking at the Democratic National Convention tonight. Taking a live look at Chicago's United Center right now, uh, those leaders are from key battleground states. John Giles, who's the mayor of Mesa, Arizona. Jeff Duncan, former lieutenant governor of Georgia. They're going to be joined by Stephanie Grisham, who previously worked as the White House press secretary. Yesterday, a historic handoff as Vice President Kamala Harris thanked President Biden for his leadership. Michigan Representative Debbie Dingell says the passing of the torch moment between Biden and Harris was an emotional one. Dingell says the party has seen a boost since Harris took the reins, and she explains what four demographics Democrats are still working to win over. We've still got college campuses that are that are mixed, are coming back. The African American community is coming back. We still have a union hall problem, to be perfectly frank. And it's how close is the election going to be? Uh, and then the Mideast continues to play out. And a new area that I'm 
was kind of paying attention to was seniors. I heard a lot of seniors. I went to about 10 different seniors meetings last week. It was the 89th birthday of Social Security. Do we not matter? Do they th we think we're irrelevant? Are both parties throwing us out? We have work to do. There's more energy. There's more enthusiasm. It's going to come down to who turns out their vote. Not always the, the, the question. You can watch President Obama's speech on night two of the Democratic National Convention right here tonight on Local 4. Hope you'll join Lester Holt and Savannah Guthrie at 10 p.m. That's when the network coverage will get underway. Live reporting, interviews, and analysis. And Karen, we'll see if it runs well into the morning like it did last night. Back yeah, to you. Yeah, it definitely was a late night last night. All right, thanks, Devin. Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey is officially resigning from office. Last month, he was convicted of 16 federal corruption charges, including bribery, extortion, wire fraud, Fraud, obstruction of justice, and acting as a foreign agent. He is set to be sentenced on October 29th. Menendez faces up to 222 years in prison. Meantime, George Helmy will serve as the interim senator until the beginning of next year when voters will choose a successor. Months after a terrifying moment mid-air, the FAA says all Boeing 787 Dreamliners need to be inspected. A Latin Airlines plane went into a sudden dive, hurting more than 50 passengers. The FAA says the cause of the dive was apparently related to the uncommanded movement of the captain's seat, which then caused the autopilot to disconnect. There have been five reports of similar issues on board 787s. Stellantis responding today to accusations that the company is not keeping its promises. Yesterday, we told you the UAW filed grievances that could lead to a national strike. Stellantis has sent out a statement saying, quote, the company has not violated the commitments made in the investment letter included in the 2023 UAW collective bargaining agreement and strongly objects to the union's accusations. In fact, the UAW agreed to language that expressly allows the company to modify product investments and employment levels. Therefore, the union cannot legally strike over a violation of this letter at this time. Of course, we'll follow it. All right, this month we are helping families get their kids ready for the new school year, working alongside Lace Up Detroit. We are seeing thousands of shoes being donated so kids can kick off the start of school feeling pretty cool and confident. Will Jones and Pamela Osborne join us now live from Durfee Innovation Society with the latest on the number of the donations. I was there with uh, Devin just a few hours ago, and the stream keeps coming in. So what's the very latest, guys? I work here. It really does. It's actually been nonstop down here uh, at Durfee Innovation Society today, Karen. And we actually have a special guest that we are going to introduce. It's Alexandra Dalton. She is with Gazelle Sports. And come on in. Because we're going to let her have the honors of changing the number here. So we had 2,763 shoes that were donated. But after her donation of 100 shoes, we are now at 2,863 shoes. You see the ladies back there from Lace Up Detroit, our partners for this wonderful event. Alexandra, why don't you tell us a little bit about why you guys decided to do this? Thank you so much for, for doing this and asking. Gazelle Sports, one of our core values is community. We, from day one, we wanted to support communities and support communities that we have our stores in. So this opportunity came up and ASICS, our, our beloved partner, uh, said, hey, let's do this together. So it brings us such joy to do it. And tell us a little bit about the shoes that you guys have yeah. donated. These are running shoes. These are athletic shoes. Yeah. That kids could really use. Absolutely. So they are fantastic shoes uh, for for running, for walking, for being active. And we just want to create healthier communities. And you know what? When you don't have good shoes, everything is off. We all know this. So to support everyone to uh, in this in this environment to have a good pair. It just brings us joy, and we're so, so, so privileged to be part of it. Alexandra, thank you so much for your donation. Thank you for coming down and for sharing what you guys are doing to help kids here in the community. Will Jones and I, uh, we want to wrap this up for you. So basically, $25 donates a pair of shoes, so you can do that. I think we actually have a donation right here. Um, so you can come on here, down. Sonny. Come on over here, Sonny. That's a photographer. We have a donation right now on this side okay let me walk on over this is live tv for you this has been happening throughout the day she's trying to figure out how to roll down the window 
How you doing? I'm Hello. Will Jones from Channel 4. Yes, I recognize you. You have a donation? I do have a donation. A brand new pair a of brand shoes. New pair of shoes. All right, we thank you so much for your You're donation. Welcome. Have a great day. You well. Thank you for supporting our efforts. So this is what we've been seeing throughout the day. And as you can see, Pam broke the news. <laughs> Alexander did really 2,863 <laughs> pairs of shoes and we're hoping to do even better the lovely ladies of Lace Up Detroit they've been joining us all day but now here since six o'clock and we're gonna be staying here until until six o'clock so you still have time to come on down and donate thank you to everyone who had I just want to make it clear this is a collection event today but you guys have been so generous that we are actually going to be expanding this and at a later date in September is when people can come and pick out a new pair of shoes so stay tuned for that but Karen for now we'll send things back to you as we'll check out these new pair of shoes they're not for you Will I was checking about we <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> I was gonna say we saw a really cool pair of spider-man shoes when we were there that were dropped off I I talked to a lady, Linda from Detroit. She actually got into not a major, but a minor fender bender driving to drop off shoes. And she's like, it doesn't matter. I'm still coming. So it was really cool to see, you know, uh, everyone's reaction. Was there a was there a person or a shoe or a story that really caught your attention, guys? Well, when someone said that they were going to donate $25 in honor of their neighbor who had recently passed away, that really just touched my heart because it just shows the impact this neighbor had on this woman and she wanted to pass the love along. There was another person that we spoke to today who said that what he wants for the child that received some of the shoes that he donated is just for them to feel the love that was involved that was on the other side of that donation so we certainly hope that's the case we're feeling the love here today most definitely lots of love this afternoon all right thanks guys we will check in with you throughout the evening and as you can see it's pretty gorgeous out there a little cooler but you know what it's actually kind of perfect for folks uh coming over and making those donations brian yeah, that's right, Karen. Not a bad day today. Some sunshine, those cool temperatures around, and a little bit of cloud cover as you're heading outside this afternoon. Tower cam over downtown Detroit. More of those puffy cumulus clouds as you've worked throughout the day. Temperatures into the 60s and 70s this afternoon. We're sitting at 73 here in Detroit, 68 over in Ann Arbor, 68 this afternoon up in Pontiac, and 70 checking in with us down in Monroe. Winds still a little breezy, but not as gusty as yesterday. Gusting upwards of 15 to 20 miles an hour in some locations. Locations, and I am expecting those winds to relax a little bit as we head into the evening and overnight hours tonight. Temperatures down into the low end of the 60s by 10 o'clock tonight, upper 50s past midnight into early tomorrow morning. That dry weather sticks around as we head all the way into the upcoming weekend, but the summer heat returns by the time we get to early next week. I'll break down how fast things warm up in your complete forewarn forecast coming up in just a few minutes.